What up, folks? Welcome back to part two. Another pair of goodies that I brought back with me from the shot. So Yeezy Quantum. A lot of questions surrounding this shoe. Uh, first, there's two different versions. The Yeezy Quantum and the Yeezy Quantum Basketball. In the beginning, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't even know what pair was releasing in Chicago. I didn't know exactly what was going on uh, with, with this shoe in general, but I knew I was gonna try to get them. Fortunately, I got lucky. I got through thanks to the uh, Foot Locker Flex app. Shout out to the Flex app. I know a lot of people having some issues with that app, but uh, I got through. So anyway, the Yeezy Quantum. Basketball inspired shoe, but there's two different styles. One for more of lifestyle, casual wear, one for performance for the court. Now, I didn't know what to expect when I actually got this shoe, but after unboxing them and checking them out, I gotta be honest with you, they're not that bad. Now, I'm not a huge fan. I don't know if I could rock these on the street or on the court, but the Easy Quantum is definitely a shoe that stands out and is different from your traditional basketball or lifestyle sneaker. Now, the difference on the two versions are mostly performance related. Obviously, with a basketball shoe, you're gonna need a little bit different materials around the shoe. You're gonna need some better um, specs on it for performance, durability, responsiveness, those kind of things. So compared to this one, which is the lifestyle version, you're gonna notice the basketball has a different cage on the upper. It's more like an RPU uh, caging over the mesh, uh, as well as the overlay here on the ankle is gonna be a little bit different, knitted down for uh, better support, keeping your ankle in place, uh, those kind of things, as well as, I think there's uh, supposed to be some different technology in the sole, uh, perhaps like some kind of performance shank uh, to help with durability, responsiveness. Uh, but in general, the differences are pretty minimal to the naked eye. Now, the lifestyle version that we have here, so this is a size 10, comes in your traditional brown Yeezy box, and it does have boost throughout the sole. The shoe itself is pretty comfortable. Yes, I did try one on, and I was pretty impressed. Again, don't know if I could see myself hooping in them, but the comfort level was there thanks to the Boost technology. Got a nice buttery suede overlay here on the toe box, very similar to that of what was on the uh, Yeezy 700 Wave Runners and other models that had uh, come out um, after that. Now, the shoe has 3M hits, throughout this upper panel here on both sides. So if you hit that with flash or anything like that, you're gonna see those 3M hits throughout that upper part. The back heel also is 3M, so both of these gray panels here are gonna reflect. And you know that was a big talking point with this shoe and kind of why the release got pushed back and, and took so long is the 3M is basically something that disqualifies it from being used on like NBA courts. And initially this was a shoe that was supposed to debut and kind of be a signature for Adidas basketball, but can't even wear it on the hardwood in the NBA where everybody's gonna see it. So not exactly sure all the details on what happened with that, but I know that's part of the reason of why uh, these didn't make their appearance as early as, as thought. The upper part around the ankle uh, it definitely cups around your ankle it feels good believe it or not but it's very thin so I'm not sure you know how that would feel performance wise but I'd be curious to know like the exact difference on the basketball pair versus the lifestyle pair uh, design and details are honestly pretty minimal uh, you saw Brandon Ingram rock these during the All-Star game. He even got them signed by Kanye, who was sitting courtside. So that was pretty dope. That was a pretty good look for the shoe. But in general, there's not a whole lot of crazy details going on with these. In fact, there's like minimal to no branding on them, which I find personally surprising. But Adidas, you know, they're clearly all in on the Easy Wave and, and they're, they're cool with, you know, his design concepts and whatnot. Uh, you're gonna see that on this bottom portion, it does say Boost right there on the actual Boost material. And then it's got a small Adidas logo here on like the kind of creamy translucent sole. Um, again, comfort on these, 
was solid. Now, the actual release process was pretty crazy on these. So, as of right now, these have only dropped in Chicago. And most places opted to do raffles or reservations through their app system. Uh, this particular pair came from Foot Locker, which I got through the uh, Flex Foot Locker app. Stacked up the points this, uh, this past weekend in Chicago. But there were a few places that did first come, first serve. So people were definitely lined up. Adidas had their own unique release process through their Adidas app. You had to sign up for like a raffle to get a chance to potentially buy a pair. Uh, to be honest, it was quite confusing to me, but it, I didn't win, so it didn't really matter. I didn't have to understand very much. But what really made headlines was the, the vehicles used before the actual release driving around Chicago, sort of like these mini tanks that were driving around uh, Wexler was, was riding around in them and uh, there was various tanks like driving around Chicago basically with pairs of these and they were handing them out for free. Now, I'm not exactly sure if they were giving away the lifestyle and basketball version or if they were just giving away the lifestyle version, but one of the signature moments that made headlines was a couple guys trading in their Air Fear of God 1s for a pair of these right off their feet. I can't <laughs> I can't imagine, to be honest, taking your shoes off in the freezing streets in Chicago. That day was so cold, and let alone trading in your Air Fear of God ones for these. I thought that was pretty crazy, but it definitely caused quite the reaction nonetheless. So that was definitely a talking point that went viral this past weekend in Chicago during All-Star Weekend. Uh, seems like they circled around like Wicker, Wicker Park area and some of those other areas like St. Alfred's is over there different stores and they were driving around giving these shoes away. Now, it later came out, <clears throat> Wexler said that they were not requiring people to trade in their shoes. That simply the guys who traded in their yellow Fear of God ones and their black Fear of God ones, they did those on their own accord. Was that staged, was it not? There's been a lot of talk about that. We'll let you guys be the judge of that. But nonetheless, I think those guys took an L by trading in their shoes because they didn't have to. So whether they like the, the Quantums better or not, they didn't have to trade them in, especially that yellow pair, man. Those go for a lot of money. So that was pretty surprising to see. Um, but some people scored. There's different video footage of people running behind uh, those, those trucks, which was honestly hilarious because it was so freezing cold out there. I, I was really cracking up, man. But, you know, anytime Easy drops something, man, there's definitely nothing uh nothing dull about the situation never a dull moment with with his releases and this was was no different so uh let us know if you're feeling these in the comments did you pick up a pair did you flip a pair uh did you get a free pair from one of the trucks were you in chicago or are you still on the hunt for them appreciate y'all watching we'll catch you on the next one